for an expertful presentation on how uh, the BioInfo platform can be uh, used or leveraged for genomic analysis. So as I was mentioning before the break, the platform, the omics logic platform is designed to help you, um, is designed to uh, help you learn more about these analysis methods and their applications in various project examples. So the program in particular that we are going to, uh, that we are going to present will include many more expanded overview of the key concepts, principles, and examples of genetic and genomic data analysis and mentor support and, uh, and all the associated, uh, uh, all the associated uh, credentials to perform these analysis. So how, so let's move on to how are such genomic studies used in real life? Let's move on to the applications uh, of these genomic studies. So what kind of research questions do they answer? And what is the application of such an extensive analysis of genomic data? So we will discuss few examples today and few example applications of genomics. And we will find that the applications of genomic studies can be employed to characterize uh, genomic variants or uh, inherited genetic variants that can cause deadly diseases like uh, sickle cell anemia, and uh, that can cause mutations in oncogenes that may cause cancer, and that can cause uh, variations or muta mutations in specific gene that might cause or that will cause Huntington's disease, or that will uh, cause several mutations or variations, uh, which will eventually enable a pathogen to develop resistance to the drug that is used to kill them. So first, upon receiving the DNA sequence of a sick, a sick patient, the first question we generally ask is, what genes are different? What genes are affected? But due to the volume of the sequence and uh, due to the number of variations that one usually finds, in sequencing output analysis, this is not a simple and straightforward question to answer. Even though genomics is currently being employed and used for diagnostics in clinical care purposes, many DNA variants are still being discovered and are still being annotated and are still being rigorously analyzed by researchers and by scientists from uh, diverse teams. So for example, in cancer, the DNA variations can help us to determine the genetic risk associated with the oncogenes. But most often, oncologists will look for somatic mutations in tumor suppressor genes, in oncogenes, or in uh, DNA repair genes specifically. Since cancer most often occurs with age, many researchers see the accumulation of mutations in key genomic, area, uh, key genomic regions. These accumulated variations uh, will occur as a combination of driver mutations that causes the cancer, and passenger mutations that tag along with the driver mutations. And uh, identifying such mutations and variations in these key genomic regions can help us diagnose cancer very early on, or can help us evaluate the risk of the cancer severity and uh, to help us on, on, well, uh, eventually point us to select uh, appropriate treatment that will slow down uh, incurable uh, metastatic cancer situations. So one example is um, um, for a gene in particular P53, tumor protein P53, uh, which uh, is responsible, this protein is responsible for tumor suppression. So it is implicated in many cancer uh, that this um, gene prevents uh, tumor growth uh, through a process called apoptosis. So some mutations in these genes that are characterized, some mutations in these genes can lead to loss of function, ultimately promoting tumorigenesis by not controlling the replication of cells with the damaged DNA. So uh, this is an example from cancer. Yeah, those are the mutations. And other diseases like uh, cystic fibrosis can also be linked to individual genes like the CTFR gene, which can, uh, which can affect the function of a channel that is responsible for clearing the mucus from the airways. And hence, um, cystic fibrosis is born. And uh, in, in the case of Huntington's disease, which there is an inherited condition, there is a genetically inherited condition from parents or from, uh, uh, from, um, from uh, chromosomal combinations, where a specific gene on chromosome four has an abnormal number of CAG codons that is repeated. So this HTT gene encodes a large, uh, a very large protein called Huntington protein. And the additional repeats in this gene will, uh, will change the structure of the protein resulting in 
uh, movement disorder and resulting in dementia and resulting in behavioral abnormalities. So in around 2015, uh, the Huntington Consortium published an excellent study of over 1000 individuals with early and late onset of disease. The genomic analysis and targeted sequences and whole, genomic sequence, whole genome sequencing of this uh, data, of this analysis, uh, from this analysis, the researchers discovered important regulatory mechanisms that are different between these two groups, one group which uh, develop early and one group which develop late onset of uh, disease. So this study also identified, okay, let's go back. Yeah, that is the, yeah, th that is uh, this one. This study also identified important mutations as shown here in chromosome 15 that are to be associated with the slower development of clinical onset. So this research as well as others are excellent examples of how genomic studies and extensive genomic studies can help us identify mechanisms of disease progression and help us identify potential therapeutic interventions uh, using the natural mechanisms of disease regulation. So in another example, tuberculosis is a contagious infection that usually attacks lungs. Uh, it can also spread to other parts of the body like brain and spine and bone, etc. Uh, a type of bacteria that you all know called mycobacterium tuberculosis causes it. But the severity of this disease is very well known and uh, it is still one of the leading causes of deaths over all over various countries. Today, most of the cases are cured, cured with antibiotics. However, recently this bacteria has become more and more resistant to single types of antibiotics. It turns out the resistance is a result of mutation on specific genes or specific promoters. So understanding which genes and which promoters that are involved uh, in, in developing this resistance to antibiotics and the mechanism of this resistance development are very critical and crucial to develop new drugs and uh, to uh, identify a multi-drug resistant tuberculosis infection from which patients can be easily uh, uh, saved. So in, in, a, in another uh, um, uh, uh, example that relates to current situation, viruses are extremely prone to acquiring mutations because of the number of times that they replicate themselves and uh, the limited machinery that they have in proofreading the replication process. So the Ebola virus, for example, is an RNA virus that causes severe disease with a very high mortality rate. During the outbreak that happened in 2014 and 16, uh, the genomic sequencing efforts has been applied in near real time, uh, real time um, track uh, to uh, understand and to, to, um, uh, to uh, model the pandemic spread and to develop a vaccine. As a result, many researchers focus their attention on potential mutations that can have profound effect on vaccine efficacy as well as viral transmission rates. This happened in 2014 and 2016, but we are seeing actually, uh, we are seeing the uh, a similar track that is uh, unraveling for SARS CoV 19 virus, the efforts in characterizing, uh, characterization of different variants, and the efforts in understanding the efficacy of multiple different uh, vaccines that we have in our hand. So, so in this workshop uh, today, we reviewed the fundamentals of genomics as well as the bioinformatics tools and the applications of such tools to various research, clinical, industrial challenges. And we demonstrated you uh, how to perform such analysis in TBioInfo platform. I hope <coughs> this uh, workshop and such uh, uh, and today uh, uh, and session today will help you in appreciating the concepts, the data, and the analysis method that is used in genomics. To learn each and every, um, yeah, to learn more about each and every one of these steps in detail, please subscribe to the genomics program that is starting shortly. And uh, I will be happy to take any questions if you have, and please present your questions in the chat room. And that, that will conclude today's session. Thank you all for participation. I'm waiting for your question.